say, Jesus, come heal me. Jesus, over here, over here. No, she got out of her comfort zone. She got up out of her situation, and she made her way to him. She was willing to contend. Y'all got to hear this by the Holy Ghost. She was willing to deal with people. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying. She was saying, I'm even willing to deal with church folks. Yeah, and they, they ain't even going to stop me. No, no, get up out of me. No, no, excuse me, excuse me. Excuse me. I, I know I'm going to pay for I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, I know I got you dirty, but I got to get my miracle. I don't care what it costs. Even ignorant church folks ain't going to stand in my way. Y'all not hear what I'm saying. Gossipers won't stand in my way. Slanderers won't stand in my way. Petty people won't stand in my way. No, religious folks won't stand in my way. I'm making my way to the master because I've decided inside of myself that I will not leave this place. Greetings, friends all over the world. This is Dr. Keenan Bridges, and on behalf of Pastor Gloria and myself, I want to welcome you to Grace and Peace Global Fellowship. I believe that this is a very, very powerful atmosphere where you will encounter the presence of God. Our mission is simple, liberate the captive, restore the broken, and to equip God's people to walk in His supernatural power. If you've been looking for a church home, I believe this is the place for you. What I want you to do now is if you look up on the screen, you'll see a QR code where you can actually get the next steps on how to be a part of this ministry, how to become a member. Also, we have Pastor Bracey and our Grace and Peace ambassadors available to answer any questions you would have about the ministry. We look forward to connecting with you. And remember, Jesus is Lord. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Supernatural School of Ministry. We want to welcome you on behalf of our pastors, Pastor Gloria and Pastor Keenan. And I just want to ask everybody if you could just stand, and we're going to pray before the service starts. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, Father, we thank you for your presence. We thank you, Lord God, that you reign in this place. We thank you, Father God, that what we need is found in you. We thank you, Lord God, that you are everything that we need. You are Jehovah Jireh. You are Jehovah Nisi. You are the Lord, our banner in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you are our Lord and Savior. You are our great high priest. You are the mediator of our faith. Father, you are everything that we could possibly need. And Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus, that we do not begin this thing in the spirit and move forward into the flesh. But Father God, we declare today, Father God, that we will walk by faith. For your word says the just shall live by faith. And Father God, we repent, we've moved from faith and into works. But Father God, we declare today, Father, that we will move in faith, Lord God. No more will we depend on our own strength. No more will we depend on our own abilities, Father. But Father, Father, this day forward, we will determine to walk in the supernatural in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord God, that your spirit is working in every person in this place. I thank you, Lord God, that we are just not sideline bleacher sitting Christians, Lord. But Father God, that we are children of the Most High God, that we are doing the Father's will in the name of Jesus. And Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are working in your people, Father. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are moving through each individual person. And Father, I ask, Lord, that we recognize who we are in the kingdom of God. Father, we are children of the most, of the high, most high God. And 
Father God, not only are we children, but we are citizens of the kingdom. And you have given each and every one of us a mandate. Hallelujah. Father God, that we rule in the kingdom of God, that we are kings and priests in the kingdom of God. Which means that we have a responsibility. We have a responsibility to display the kingdom in the earth. We have a responsibility to display Jesus Christ in the earth, Father. Lord, forgive us if we have not been living up to that call. Forgive us, Lord God, if we have not been walking in, in stewarding what you've called each and every one of us to do. Father, we thank you, Lord God, that not only your word lives on the inside of us, Lord, but Lord, that your power may be displayed in the earth, Lord. Father, I thank you that there's a revival happening. That is happening in your church, Lord. That, Lord God, that the revival fire will stir in us, Lord Jesus. That, Father God, that we will be set ablaze in the word of God. That we will be set ablaze, Lord God, that we can set other people on fire, Lord Jesus. For, Lord God, for you to come, there needs to be a revival in your people. People need to see you, Lord Jesus. And, Lord, we repent, Father, that we haven't been good examples of you. Lord, we repent right now, Father God, that we haven't been walking according to the way that you've called us to walk, Father. That we have not been, been obedient to your word. But Father, we declare out of our mouths, Lord, that we lay ourselves down today on this altar, Lord. And we will be obedient to your word. We will be obedient to what you've told us to do, Lord God. We will remember the last thing you told us to do, Father. And we will obey that instruction, Lord. Lord, we thank you for your presence. We thank you, Lord Jesus. I'm going to read Galatians 3, 1. Oh, foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? It was before your eyes that Jesus Christ was publicly portrayed as crucified. Let me ask you only this. Did you receive the spirit by works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Are you so foolish, having begun by the spirit? Are you now being perfected by the flesh? Father God, we repent, Father. We repent, Father God, for working, for working in the flesh, Lord God, for trying to do ministry in the flesh, Lord, for trying to do the call of God in the flesh, Lord God. We repent of that, Lord God, and we declare, Father God, that we want to move by your spirit. Nothing has to be planned. It don't have to be written down. It don't have to be in a structured order. But, Lord, however your spirit wants to flow through us, Lord, that's what we want, Lord. We want to we'll be an open conduit channel for the Holy Spirit. That you can use us whenever you choose to use us. That we will say whatever you want us to say. That we'll talk to whoever you want us to talk to, Father. Lord, let us be open to your call. Let us be open to what you want to do, Lord. We lay down our lives and our agendas, Lord God. And Father God, we declare, Lord, what you want to do, Lord. We are here to do your bidding. We are here to do your will in the name of Jesus. And so, Father, we thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you, Father God, for the preaching and the teaching that will go forth from this place today, Lord. And we ask, Lord God, that our hearts is fertile ground to receive the word of God. Lord God, whatever weeds that are dug up in our hearts, pull them out in the name of Jesus. Any wall that is built around our hearts, Lord, destroy it in the name of Jesus. Let our hearts be fertile ground for the word of God. Let it be fertile, Lord God, that your word may penetrate that your word may produce fruit in us, Lord God. For your word is the seed, Lord. And we don't want the seed to fall on stony ground or thorny, thorny ground. But Lord, let our hearts be fertile ground for the word of God. And Father, we pray that as your word is being poured into us, Lord God, that you prevent the enemy from picking up that word out of our hearts, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Lord. For some of us receive the impartation of the word, and as soon as we leave out of here, the enemy tests that word. But, Father, I thank you, Lord God, for building a hedge of protection against the enemy. I pray, Lord God, that you protect our minds from his thoughts in the name of Jesus. And, Lord, let us be mindful of our responsibilities of what we need to do, and that's casting down every imagination and every evil thought that comes from the enemy, Lord Jesus. But, Lord, we are asking for supernatural power, Lord. We're asking for help from above, Lord God, to receive your word. And, Lord, to let the word germinate, Father. Lord, we thank you for what you are doing in each and every one of us, Lord. Lord, I declare that we haven't arrived yet, Lord. 
there's still more room for us to grow. There's still more room for us to receive from you, Lord. And just when we think we've arrived somewhere, Lord, I thank you, Lord, for opening up our eyes to see that, no, there's still some other things we got to deal with. Hallelujah. So, Father, I thank you for dealing with those things. I thank you for uncovering the lies that we believe from the enemy. I thank you for uncovering the subconscious thoughts that we have that are not like you, Father. Lord, reveal to us in the areas in our lives that we have not submitted unto you, Lord Jesus, that we may turn from our ways and submit unto you. And Father, I pray over our pastors, Lord. I pray, Lord God, a double portion, a double portion of the anointing over their lives, Lord, in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord God, that you bless them with every spiritual blessing, Lord Jesus. I thank you, Lord God, that you take care of your children. For your word said you have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor their seed begging bread, Lord. Your word said wealth and riches shall reign in our homes, Lord. And I declare that wealth and riches shall reign in their house in the name of Jesus. I de- declare that their children are blessed, their finances are blessed, their property is blessed, everything that they touch is blessed in the name of Jesus, everything that they touch will multiply in the name of Jesus. And Father, I thank you, Lord God, for a praying mother. I thank you, Lord God, that we have a mother over this house that prays for her people, that prays for her children. I thank you, Lord God, that every word that she has spoken, every word that she has prayed does not fall to the ground, but it produces fruit and it produces a harvest in her children's lives. And Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We do not take it for granted that we have good stewards over this house. For I've been in houses where the stewards didn't take care of their children or their sheep. But Father, we are in a house where the the shepherds are taking care of their children and they're feeding them not just with milk, but with meat. We thank you, Lord, for the meat that we receive. We thank you, Lord God, that we're just not being, being fed sugar-coated candy all the time. But, Father, we're getting fed the, good, the meat of God. Hallelujah. Lord, thank you for strong meat. And thank you for our leaders. Lord, I declare that this session will be blessed. Lord, miracles will break forth in this place. Deliverance will break forth in this place. People will receive salvation today. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you for a turnaround in every situation in which we're coming into you for. And Father, I thank you, Lord, that today will be a day that will change the, change the trajectory of our lives. I thank you that our minds will change. I thank you that our heart is being renewed. I thank you, Lord God, that you're doing something in your people today, Father. This is just not an ordinary gathering, Lord. This is a supernatural gathering. And we thank you for your presence in this place. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's thank the Lord for Sister Jessica setting the atmosphere for the move of God. Amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. How many glad to be in another supernatural school of ministry here at Grace and Peace. On behalf of Dr. Cain and Pastor Glory, we welcome you, those who are here in the sanctuary, as well as all who are worshiping with us via live stream. Amen. Amen. And so as we continue our worship tonight, we want you to be mindful of the following grace and peace protocols. We ask that you please refrain from video or sound recording of the service with the exception of authorized grace and peace media personnel. And of course, during our worship, we ask that you do not chew gum, eat or drink beverages other than water in the sanctuary. And please, we ask that you would take out your electronic devices now and either turn them off or silence them now so as not to interrupt the service flow. And unless you are authorized Grace and Peace Ministerial staff, we ask that you please refrain from administering personal ministry to individuals such as praying, laying on of hands, or giving prophetic words. And of course, during times of prayer, or altar ministry, we ask that you remain reverent and refrain from walking and talking unnecessarily. And if you should desire to give anything to a child, we ask that you please consult the parent first, and parents, please do accompany your minor children 
if they must leave the sanctuary for any reason other than a sanctioned grace and peace dismissal, such as our children's church. And beloved, your attention to these protocols will contribute to an uninterrupted flow of the presence and the power of God. Can we all say amen? Amen. amen. Well, at this time, we invite your attention, please, to our pre-recorded announcements. Hello, on behalf of Pastor Kenan T. Bridges and Pastor Gloria Bridges, we welcome you to another day of worship and fellowship here at Grace and Peace. This is the place where grace reigns and Jesus Christ is Lord. We also want to welcome you guys that are watching online. If you're ever in the area, come and visit us. We're located at 6015 Interbay Boulevard, Tampa, Florida. Our mission here at Grace and Peace is to liberate the captive, restore the broken, and equip God's people to walk in his supernatural power so they can release the kingdom of God to the ends of the earth. Our Supernatural Sunday service starts at 10 a.m. and accessory prayer starts at 9.30. This service is also streamed to Facebook and YouTube. Join us as we embark on an exciting discovery of the hidden treasures in the Word of God. Prepare your hearts to experience the miraculous and supernatural power of God through prayer, praise, and preaching the unadulterated, life-changing Word of God. Monday through Friday, we have our daily morning prayer call from 6 a.m. to 6.15. The prayer phone call number is 727-731-5371. We also have our corporate church fast every Wednesday from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. We end our fast together in prayer at 5.45 p.m. using the same prayer line phone number. Every Tuesday, we have our Supernatural School of Ministry hosted by our very own Pastor Keenan T. Bridges. Service is held here at the church starting at 7 p.m. This is an in-depth, interactive, and participatory Bible study with our pastor. Through his profound revelation of the Word of God and dynamic teaching ministry, Pastor Keenan will equip you with the tools to walk in your supernatural calling. Come ready expecting healing, miracles, impartation, activation, deliverance, and breakthrough. Next, we have our Supernatural Breakthrough Prayer, which is every Saturday from 6.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. You are invited to come experience a powerful time of prayer, prophecy, and impartation. Jesus tells us that if we shall agree on earth as touching anything that we ask, it shall be done. For this reason, the Hour of Power Prayer is one of the most important services of the week. You don't want to miss this. Join us as we intercede for the nations and the body of Christ. This service is also streamed via Facebook and YouTube Live. Every third Sunday of the month at 6.30 p.m., we have Healing School. We believe that according to the Word of God, healing is the divine right of every born-again believer. Jesus himself bore our sins in his body, and his atoning sacrifice produced in us the reality of the forgiveness of sins, healing in our bodies, and divine health. Be empowered to live in the reality of what Christ has purchased for the church and learn how to apply the Word of God to administer healing to yourselves and to others. Lastly, if you're not able to join us here at Grace and Peace, you can always worship with us online via live stream for all services at the appointed time mentioned earlier. Just follow Dr. Keenan T. Bridges on Facebook and YouTube and make sure your notifications are turned on. We hope that you will take advantage of these opportunities here at Grace and Peace for your discipleship and growth in living the Christ life. Too many Christians all over the world are settling for experiencing small doses of God's supernatural love. But what if I told you that you could walk in the supernatural power of God every day? My friends, now is the time. This great move of God that's hitting the earth will involve your participation and your cooperation. God doesn't just want to use you. He wants to partner with you to release heaven and earth, and so that eternity can invade time. In this practical eye-opening book, you will learn the supernatural secrets and divine blueprints to walk and operate in the miraculous. Miracles are deliberate, redeeming, life-changing displays of God's love in action. And it's time for you to not only receive miracles, but to release miracles. You will learn how to live in a sustained flow of the power and presence of God. Not just an event, but a lifestyle. Miracles are your inheritance, and the Holy Spirit is waiting to partner with you. Releasing miracles. How to walk in the supernatural power of God.
Grace and Peace family, Dr. Keenan Bridges here. And on behalf of Pastor Gloria and myself, we want to first of all thank you for being a part of this local vision and extend an opportunity to you to serve, to use your gifts, your talents, and your abilities for the glory of God and for the expansion of the local church. We have many ministries here that you can serve in, including greeters, ushers, an accessory team. There's so many. Sozo team, and we want you to be a part of that. If you have finished the foundations class and you want to be a part of some of these ministries, greeters, ushers, or any of the ministries listed in your new members packet, we want you to be a part of this. So we encourage you, go to the website, graceandpower.org, but also email Pastor Bracey at graceandpower.org for more information on how you can connect more deeply this local community. We love you and remember Jesus is Lord. Amen. Grace and Peace will have its next evangelistic outreach. It will be held this coming Saturday, March 16th. All participants will meet here in the sanctuary at 10 a.m. for a brief session before going out to minister. The location of the evangelistic outreach will be announced on the date of the event. So please save this date, beloved. That's this coming Saturday, March 16th, 10 a.m. here in the sanctuary, and you can sign up with Sister Joan Brown. Churchwide town hall meeting. Attention all Grace and Peace members. All Grace and Peace members. In lieu of our monthly leadership meeting, Dr. Keenan is calling a churchwide town hall meeting for all members of Grace and Peace. The meeting will be held on the fifth Sunday of March, March 31st at 1 p.m. here in the sanctuary. Every Grace and Peace member is asked to be in attendance for this churchwide meeting. Please mark this date on your calendar and your electronic devices and plan now to be present. Again, that's the Grace and Peace Churchwide Town Hall Meeting, Sunday, March 31st, 1 p.m. here in the sanctuary. All out-of-town, out-of-state, out-of-country members will have a private link available in the Grace and Peace WhatsApp chat New Grace and Peace family. Amen? Please mark that date and time. Grace and Peace Bookstore, we would like to inform you that the bookstore is open after each service for you to purchase your spiritual enrichment items. And the bookstore, of course, is located in the lobby to your left as you exit the sanctuary. Dr. Keenan's latest book, as you saw in the video, Releasing Miracles, How to Walk in the Supernatural Power of God, is available in the bookstore, as well as many other books written by Dr. Keenan, and also other exciting and interesting merchandise for you. Be sure and stop in the bookstore today. If you are a family member, friend, or co-worker, neighbor, is in need of deliverance and would like to schedule a deliverance session with our deliverance team ministry, you may do so by forwarding a request to the following email, sozo at graceempower.org. And beloved, please be sure to include your name and telephone number in your correspondence. Amen? That concludes our announcements for this evening. Is the man of God available? Yes. All right. Please stand as we welcome to the pulpit the man of God, Dr. Kenan T. Bridges. Let's thank God for him as he comes. <laughs> what happened? All right. <laughs> All right, you may be seated. Do we have any exciting and wonderful testimonies of the goodness of God? Do we have any testimonies tonight? All right, come, Sister Leah. Good Hello. So I was at Walmart this morning, and I felt prompted by the Holy Spirit to 
um, just speak to them about Jesus. So I started with the script. Just and I heard, I thought I heard in my spirit like a woman, a young woman. I was trying to gauge like, okay, so every woman I saw, I was like, hey, did you know God loves you? First two people were like, nah, I'm not interested. I'm not doing that. They're like somebody else needs Jesus more. I'm like, all right, God bless you. I talked to the third lady. She barely spoke English. And I was kind of like, you know, I'm broken Spanish. I'm like, oh, Dios, um, te amo. And she's like, oh, yes, yes, you're talking about God. And so we prayed, and um, I kind of introduced the gospel message to her. I asked her, you know, would you like to know? I said, yeah, um, if you, do you know if, without a shadow of a doubt if you were to die today, if you were able to go to heaven? She's like, I'm not sure. So I said, do you want to be sure today? She said, yes. And so I got to pray with her. And after I prayed with her, she's like, you know, I really appreciated that. Thank you so much. And so that's my testimony. All right, please stand as we receive the man of God, Dr. Kenneth T. Bridges. You may be seated. All right. Praise the Lord. I want to reiterate, so we're having a town hall meeting. That's the last. It's the last, right, with you? The last Sunday of twenty, of of, of the of March. Sorry, it's the last Sunday of the month, and every member of the church is encouraged to attend. Usually, we have what's called our staff meetings, uh, but we're we're going to have this town hall in lieu of our staff meeting. So, please, if you have questions, bring your questions, concerns, and we're going to have just like a town hall, like an open forum for the whole church. So whatever you want to uh, discuss during that time, you can. And uh, we just ask that it be God glorifying. And, you know, he's the center of all that we do. So we, we're going to let the Lord have his way. Amen? Amen. So any questions you have, again, begin to write those down. We have some items that we're going to talk about during the town hall. But um, if you have questions, that's a time where you can do that as well. Okay? Hallelujah. Y'all all right? Yeah. You sure? Yeah. All right. Well, let's pray. And uh, I'm just going to flow tonight, really, um, and get into the word. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to hear your word. We thank you for the opportunity to speak to us. And we ask, Lord, that every word that is spoken is that which is ordained and commissioned by you, that you alone may be glorified. Thank you for the tongue of the learned, that I may speak a word in season. Awaken my ears to hear as the learned. Awaken the ears of your people to hear and to receive what the Spirit is saying to the church. We commit this time to you tonight, and we thank you in advance for the miracles, signs, and wonders you will manifest to confirm your word. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Go there to uh, the Gospel of John, the Gospel of John, chapter 1, beginning with verse 1. John, chapter 1, beginning with verse 1. When you have that, please say amen. John, chapter 1, beginning with verse 1. It says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Okay, now go over there to Hebrews chapter 11, verses 1 through 3. Hebrews 11, 1 through 3. When you have it, please say amen. amen. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So let me read it again. It says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Read it one more time. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, 
the evidence of things not seen. Go to the next verse. For by it the elders obtain a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed, it disappeared by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Amen. That's why you got to memorize the scriptures. Amen. You got to memorize the scriptures. Amen. But for your sake, I'll read it again. <laughs> Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Now, I want you to go over there to Mark chapter 16. Mark 16, and we'll start with the last five verses. Mark is right before Luke, right after Matthew. Hallelujah. One of the most debated scriptures in the Bible. This has more theological debate than any other chapter in the Bible, particularly in the Gospels, and uh, I'll, I'll show you why. Very interesting. Mark chapter 16, I want you to see this. Young people, are y'all paying attention or are y'all talking? Hallelujah. Now go over here to the book of Mark 16, verse 15. And he said unto them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. That's the word also demons. Okay? They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Don't be dry tonight, y'all. Come on now. <laughs> so then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. Verse 20, and they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them, and confirming the word with signs following. Tonight I want to talk about cooperating with the spirit realm. Cooperating with the spirit realm. You know, I, uh, <clears throat> as I was thinking about this message, pondering tonight, I thought it probably took me 13 years to be in a position to share what I'm going to share tonight. It probably took me about 13 years of pastoring, pastoral ministry, to be in the place of what I'm going to share tonight. Now, you need to understand something interesting. The food that is often served is based upon the appetite of the people. The food that is often served is based on the appetite of the people. Spiritual hunger creates demand for deeper revelation. So it's not just a graduation of me as a pastor or communicator as it relates to you, but it is a graduation of you as a sheep as it relates to your appetite, your spiritual appetite. 
Now, I just want to go a little deeper, if we can. You do understand that hunger is something that very few people in our busy modern society actually experience. Years ago, I was watching TV and Trinity Broadcast Network, and uh, they had this holistic specialist on, and he was talking about gut health and stuff like that. One of the things that he said, he said the average American doesn't experience hunger. He said because they often mistake their stomach's growling and, 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 and the, you know, how many have done that? When your stomach growls, you'll be like, man, I'm hungry, right? Actually, what this gentleman shared is that when your stomach is growling, it's actually your gut detoxifying. The, the, the abdominal acids are moving to get rid of all the junk you just ate the night before. That's why they call it breakfast, because you're breaking a fast. You're fasting while you sleep, and you break the fast when you eat. So it's called breakfast. You're, you're essentially fasting. And any time you begin to fast, you begin to detox. You begin to detox, right? You know, so, so all those abdominal fluids are going back and forth like a dishwasher to get rid of the junk in your gut. So most people believe that when they feel that, it's time to eat again. It's actually not when you're supposed to eat. The cephalic indicator of when you're about to be hungry or when you're hungry is you begin to salivate. Salivating is the sign that your body is prepared to consume food. Okay? Digestion begins in your mouth. So when you salivate, that means I'm, 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 I'm ready to eat. So most people mistake detoxifying for hunger. Why am I saying this? Jesus says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. And I asked the Lord years ago, I said, Lord, break this down to me about hunger. And what he showed me, he said, the reason why many people can't consume the things that bring them into a greater dimension is because they don't allow themselves to experience hunger. And you can't become spiritually hungry if you're eating junk food all the time. If you're constantly consuming junk food, it inhibits your hunger. In the same way as a believer, if you're constantly consuming teaching that tantalizes, it does not provoke the hunger necessary to bring you into a new dimension. So I believe 13 years was a time frame that God used, that's just, maybe this is how long it took, to talk about this message. So I want to talk about cooperating with the spirit realm. The first thing I want you to know and write down is that the spirit realm has a deeper reality than the natural or the physical realm. The spirit realm has a deeper reality than the, than the natural or physical realm. Now, why is this so important? Because if we are spiritual beings created in the image of God, it means that your sustenance, your primary sustenance must flow from the realm in which you were born. I'm going to break this down for you. Watch this. Are y'all paying attention? I need everybody to pay attention. Watch this. I want you to see this. I want you to see this. A baby, when a baby is born, what does the baby consume? Where does that come from? You know 2,000 years ago they didn't have formula. So the baby consumes milk from the mother. In other words, here's, here's the anatomical, the biological reality. In order for the baby to survive in its early uh, years, in, in fact, the, the, the first milk that the baby begins to consume is called colostrum. And it comes out of the mother's breast. And it's, it's, a, it's a clear 
liquid. And what that, that liquid is designed to do is to develop the baby's brain and to bind the baby to the mother. So this is, this is, this is powerful. In other words, the first thing the baby has to consume is the very substance from the one that produced it. It takes the substance from the mother to sustain the child that comes from the mother. Okay, I'm going to break it down. Y'all really want to get deep with this. I'm going to break it down to you. We are, every human being in, in this room is what's called a carbon-based life form. That's why you need water to survive. You need water to survive. 75% of your body is water. You are, you are made of water, therefore you need water to survive. Am I communicating? I'm really trying to take my time. You always need what you're made of to sustain. So here's my question. If you're born from the Spirit, what do you need to survive? So which means this. If the spirit realm is of a deeper reality, then y'all stop talking. Y'all stop. If the spirit realm, sorry, I had to do that. It was just, is of a deeper reality than the natural realm. You have to understand something. Most of my substance as a believer has to flow from the realm in which I originate. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. All things were made by Him, and without Him, was not anything made that was made. So watch this. If I was made, oh God, this is deep. If I was made of the word, then it takes the word to sustain my existence. So here, watch this. Here's the problem. If you're a Christian, if you're a born-again believer, Without, with some exceptions, we have some exceptions to this rule because there are certain conditions uh, like edema where a person retains too much fluid, right? So those are, those are, there are some uh, irregularities in people in terms of their health. But for most people, you need a lot of water in order for your body to function properly. And most people are dehydrated. They don't drink enough water. So it affects your digestion. It affects your weight. It affects your mood. It affects your circulatory system. Everything is affected by how much water you drink. Is that correct? I mean, help me. Help me now. So most people don't drink enough water. So they have, other, they have problems in their health because of dehydration. Because that water helps to cleanse your body, helps to keep your pH balance the right place so people have too much acidity in their body, too much acid in their body. And so it causes all kind of inflammation and issues. And sometimes you'll find if you start drinking more water, right, it will alleviate a lot of things going on in your body. Now here's, here's my thing. The Bible says, it talks about Christ and the church. And it talks about the washing of water by the word. So here it is. Watch this. If I don't consume from the realm I'm born from, it will have the same effect as a person who does not drink enough water it will cause spiritual dehydration. Wow. 
Let me give an example. I'm not even in my message yet. This is just the, the, you know, the introduction. So, have you noticed that when you're really praying, when you're really praying, when you're really in the spirit, when you're really praying, right, you'll notice that your temperament is such that you learn how to let things go. Come out of all night prayer, not, not even all night prayer, just your prayer closet, period. And you praying and you're in the spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And then all of a sudden, somebody jumps in front of you and travels. You're like, Bless him, Lord. Bless him, Jesus. 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 <laughs> But when you ain't prayed in three days, can I get a witness in here? Come on, somebody. Spirit of David comes upon you. What's wrong with you? Move out. I told you a funny story. I was uh, on my way to church when I lived in Georgia. I'm on my way to church one Sunday morning. And, uh, you know, I'm focused. I'm really trying to get to church. I'm running a little bit behind. And then somebody cuts in front of me. And, man, we, we start getting, you know, I didn't yell at the person, but, man, you could just, you know that tension you feel, that road rage, that spirit of rage that comes on you. And so I'm, I'm, I beat my horn, and I'm like, man, what in the world's going on? And I noticed that. So the person uh, got behind me, and, and I noticed that, that everywhere I turn, they turn. I'm like, are they following me? And then I turn another street, they turn on that street, and then they make, I make another right, they make another right. I'm like, okay, this is getting a little bit weird right now. And all of a sudden, I turn on my church's street, and they turn on the church's street. And then I, as I turn into the church's parking lot, they turn into the church's parking lot. And as I park in my parking space, they park in theirs. And so this is the most awkward moment when... Bless the Lord. God bless you, man of God. <laughs> so I say cooperating. I want you to see this. The Bible says, watch this. It says, and they went preaching the gospel everywhere. The Lord working with them, that's the Greek word sinner geo or sooner geo. It means to synergize. It means synergy. It's when two, two entities or two forces or two agencies work together. There is a co-operation. Co means together and to operate. A co-operation. This is so important. What does the word cooperate mean? It's a very interesting word. I love this because it really speaks to what I want to talk about tonight. The process of working together to the same end. Assistance, especially by ready compliance with request. The formation of operation. It's from the Latin word cooperare or, co or cooperatio. It literally means interesting to enforce, to work together. Very, very powerful. To cooperate. Now, here's what you need to understand. Here's what you need to understand. If there's a realm that is unseen, that is of a deeper 
reality than what I can see. The Bible says that which is born of the flesh is flesh, that's, that which is born of the spirit is spirit, John chapter 3. Okay? Then in order for me to live supernaturally, I have to align my life with the unseen. If I'm going to be successful spiritually, I have to align my life with the unseen. Here's the problem. 1 John chapter 2. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. For all that's in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life which is not of the Father, but is of the world, and the world passes away in the lust thereof, but he that does the will of God abides forever. Notice what it says, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Those three things deal with the human experience as it relates to our senses. I'll give an example. Again, I'm not in the message yet, but I'll give an example. God said, you know what? You're taken care of. I've supplied all your needs. You feel it. You know it's true. You feel the anointing. How many have ever felt a word came forth for you and you knew within yourself that was for me and it was real? You, you felt the, the, the power of it. You felt that word in your spirit. Watch this. And here's the issue that happens. When you go home, I'm just giving an example. You go home and... God just told you abundance, taken care of, needs met, and you go home and there's bills that when you look at your account, it don't add up. The math ain't mathing. Right? What do people do? People begin to emphasize what they see. What am I going to do about this? What am I going to do about this? And so you start, watch this, what you see, your senses, your sense realm, begins to manipulate what you know God told you. You're like, man, God, God. And so now you're trying to, watch this, you're trying to force God to respond to what you see. God, you see this? As opposed to putting things in their proper perspective, putting things in their proper level of priority. This is what I mean. You heard that word, you know it was God, you get home, you see something that contradicts what you know you heard, and instead of letting the thing you see contradict what you know you heard, you need to use the spiritual osmosis technique and cause what you know in the unseen realm to force what you see in the natural to change its equation. I'm not going to let what I see change what God said. I'm going to let what God said change what I see. That's how it has to work. Right now in this room, there are angels. You know, like years ago, I gave this example. I was uh, preaching, and I saw under under every chair, I saw rubies and gemstones the sizes of, of bowling balls. It was, it was the most amazing thing. And I saw that people got up from their seats and they walked out and the gemstones remained. And I said, Lord, what was that? He said, those were the answers to their prayers. But hear this. When God speaks something, when God does something, when God wants something from your life, it requires cooperation. Amen. 
So I say, you got to work with them. You got to work with God. You have to synergize. I said this earlier in the teaching that I was doing. They have these horses called uh, Clydesdales. And, and big old horses, man, they, they're, they're huge. I mean, they, they can get, I don't know how much they weigh, but they're huge. They can get big. Muscular horses. And they said that one Clydesdale can, can literally pull up to five to 6,000 pounds. I mean, just massive animal. But they said two Clydesdale, Clydesdales can pull 26,000 pounds. So you say, well, hold on. I thought it would be double. You pull 6,000, I pull 6,000, that's 12,000. You pull 5,000, I pull 5,000, that's 10,000. But what does the Bible say? One can put 1,000 to 10,000. The exponential power of synergy. The exponential. See, synergy unlocks the exponent. So here's a question. What could happen if we synergize with heaven? But pastor, you don't understand. It's just me. You know, it's a lot of folks in my family don't think like me, but you don't need them to. Elijah told Gehazi, hey, don't worry about it, man. We're covered. We're surrounded. He said, with what? What are you talking about? He said, we're surrounded. And, and Elijah says, Lord, open his eyes that he may see. And when his eyes were open, friends, he began to see that all around him were chariots of fire. Sometimes you walk in that office, you think you're the only believer in there. You think you're the only one that prays like you do. You think you're the only one that believes like you do. But let me tell you something. There's a whole host that went in there with you. You're not by yourself. You don't even realize it. But watch this. That host, which is invisible, can't have their full expression without your cooperation. Go to Romans chapter, let me see how I want to go, 826. Romans chapter 8, verse 26. I want you to see this. Romans chapter 8, verse 26. Very important. Likewise, the Spirit also helps our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit, it says itself, but it should be himself, makes intercession for us with groanings, which cannot be uttered. I want you to stop there. I'm going to give you this, the mechanics of this. Praying in the Spirit is not just praying in tongues. Praying in the Spirit is not just praying in tongues. In fact, sometimes you can pray in tongues and not be praying in the Spirit. I just messed with every Pentecostal in the room. I just violated every charismatic theology that we know. What you trying to say? I mean, because tongue, man, tongues. I believe in tongues. I pray in tongues. I believe in the, the charismatic expression of tongues. I believe in the baptism in the Holy Ghost. But I want to tell you something. I want to tell you something. Praying in the Spirit is not just about praying in tongues. It's about your level of alignment while you're praying. Oh, God. The Spirit, watch this, helps our infirmities. What's the infirmity? The Bible tells us what the infirmity is in, in 
Romans 8, 26. The infirmity or the weakness or the limitation is not knowing what to pray about. That's the weakness. I don't know what to pray about. You know, it's an interesting thing. You're praying sometimes and you're just like, what do I pray about? You know, I've prayed about, you know, you learn as a kid, Lord bless mommy, daddy, sister, brother, auntie, uncle, cousins, school teachers, and you start, your list starts to run out. But how many know that sometimes if you're sensitive in the spirit, the Holy Spirit will actually quicken your spirit, man, and give you the download of what to pray. That's how the help comes. Oh, God, I feel this thing. Sometimes it's not just, Lord, I didn't get a promotion on my job. I'm praying for promotion. And God's like, no, that's not the prayer point. That's not the prayer point. That's the, that's the weakness. Listen, that's, that's the infirmity. You're praying out of your infirmity because you don't know the point to touch when you're praying. But when you begin to go into the spirit, and that's why sometimes you got to pray in tongues to pray. So when you begin to pray in the Holy Ghost, he'll drop something down in your spirit. And, and instead of praying for promotion, you begin to pray for your supervisor's marriage. Y'all ain't ready for this. Come on now. You praying, Kodomashata. You want, you want the promotion, but Kodomashakala Namasa. Father, I take authority over that spirit working against my supervisor and, and frustrating him when he gets home. Lord, I come against that confusion and pain and bitterness in their marriage. And watch this. Now, when you come to work, you got another supervisor who has the ability to see you in order to promote you. Because he had so much chaos in his life, he couldn't even recognize you. Sometimes the secret is praying for the person who is giving you the most difficult time. We were in this church, and uh, man, we were going through so much attack. Pastor walked us in the office and said, don't pray in tongues no more in this church. Don't pray in tongues from the stage no more. That's not of God, da 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 But anyway, so we start going with all these accusations and all this stuff. And there was this one guy. And, and, and it, it was made, what's the word? It was exposed that he was one of the main culprits behind a lot of the chaos and the confusion. So this traveling evangelist came, and he's preaching this message called The Battle for Your Heart. And he's preaching, and, and uh, as he's preaching, he comes to me during the altar call, and he begins to pray, starts praying in tongues very softly under his voice. It was a Southern Baptist church. He had to be secret when he was praying. So. <laughs> So he's praying, and he says, I don't know why the Lord's dealing with me about this. He says, but, but God says it's very important that you pray for him. And he pointed to the guy. He says, the future of your ministry depends on it. I'm going to go deep tonight, y'all. I'm just getting started. How to cooperate with the spirit realm. What is heaven saying about my day? And am I saying the same thing? The Lord wants me to touch on this.
co-operating. That means to operate together. <clears throat> if I were the devil, which I'm not, what I would do is try to disrupt your cooperation. That's what I would try to do. Now, this is not my message, but I just want because I feel this by the Holy Ghost in the room, and I'm, I'm cooperating with the Holy Ghost right now. Some of you have been dealing with offense in your heart. And what happens is, I didn't realize this until, you know, I've, I've known it for years, but recently it's become very, very evident. Very evident. Because what offense does, I want you to go read my book, Unmasking the Accuser. Offense is one of the enemies, it's one of hell's greatest weapons of witchcraft to manipulate a believer. Because, notice what the Bible says. Adam and Eve walked with God in the cool of the day, Genesis chapter 2. They were naked and unashamed, Genesis 2. That's how that that's chapter ends. They were naked, but they had no shame. In other words, we're not insecure about how we look. We're not insecure about what we have because we are so enthralled in the atmosphere of heaven that we're in. The, the glory was literally engulfing them. So they couldn't even see their own nakedness. I, I believe personally, they didn't even, when they looked at each other, they didn't see any nakedness. I, this is just my personal perception. I believe that when Adam looked at Eve, he saw glory. And when Eve looked at Adam, she saw glory. They didn't see any nakedness because their clothing was the glory of God. They were dressed in his presence. So here it is. They're not worried about that. They're not insecure about it. They're not, they're not looking at their bodies and, and body shaming, none of that, because they have, no, they, they have no consciousness of how they look because they're so busy walking with God. Y'all got to hear this. They're walking with God. They're walking with him. They're aligned with him. So what happens? The devil sees this cooperation, and he says, I got to stop this. How do I stop it? How do I get them to fall out of agreement with God? And in Genesis chapter 3, the first thing he does, it says the serpent was more subtle than every beast of the field. The word serpent there in Hebrew deals with divination. So he incorporates a divination and he says to the woman, did God say, that's, number, that's it right there. If I can get them to question what God said, to now fall out of agreement, now, now begin, to, begin to question what you know God told you. Y'all feel, feel the Holy Ghost here. Amen. To get you to doubt what God told you. Yeah. Then if you study the text carefully, you will see that there is a subtle offense that the enemy introduces to her. In other words, what Satan does, in Genesis 3, read it at, at your own leisure, what Satan does through the means of the serpent is he gets the woman to believe that there's something God has that he's not giving her. In other words, God's withholding from me. In other words, it was a slanderous attempt to malign the character of God. God's holding something back from me. Mm-hmm. He holds something back from me. Wow. Wow. And now she is more receptive to the conversation. No, you didn't hear what I just broke down. So I'm going to break it down some more. Let me give you an example. You first come to church. When you first get to a church, right, you, your excitement actually blinds you to all the negative and toxic things around you. It's not that they're not there. You're just not paying attention to them. Y'all better say amen to me. Ain't nobody going to say anything. You, you, I, I, I'm talking about you are not, watch this, you're not focused on the flaws of others because you are so busy focusing on the one 
who is doing work in your life. I wish I had a witness in here. When I first came to church, man, I remember when I first got saved, music was jumping in there. I said, oh, okay. Got up in here, and I was so excited. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You're so excited about the Holy Ghost. And then I got filled with the Holy Ghost. I began to speak in tongues. Now I'm really excited. Now I'm really excited. Now I'm really uh, 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 connecting. And watch this. What the devil begins to do is he starts to enact his sideshow. He started to play his games. Oh, God, I'm going to go deep. Eve was doing okay, man. She's doing good. And Satan says, what did I tell you? Then he, 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 he inserts that little subtle accusation. God, it really ain't all that good. He's withholding something from you. He's withholding something from you. And in order for her to see the evidence the enemy was presenting, she had to take her eyes off of something else. And this is not even my main message, but I'm telling you, one of the technologies of the devil is offense. Because what he does is try to take your eyes off of the prize. So then he tells you about the hypocrites in the church. And everybody ain't walking in love. And why is sister so-and-so doing that? And why is brother so-and-so doing that? And, and why are they up there? I mean, if, that, if they up there, I know I should be up there. Y'all quiet, that's okay. And why they're wearing that and looking like that. And, talk, and so what happens is, and those things may be accurate, but what they're doing is they are alienating you from the assignment. Let, let me help y'all. People say, well, how can people be in the church and they don't love the Lord and, and folks doing this and that? And I just don't understand. Don't they see that? Don't the pastor see it and don't this and that? You forget Job chapter 1. When the angels came and showed up in heaven, it says Satan was right there with them. And demons come to church. And sometimes they drive the vehicles called Christians to get there. Oh, now we, we ain't going to say nothing now. And sometimes what's really happening is the demons that Uber with you are fighting with the demons that Uber with them. Okay, y'all ain't saying nothing. That was a side show. That's a side note, side note. But hear this. I want you to understand this. So hear this. So the enemy comes to try to disrupt your syncopation with the Father. Because your success as a believer is determined how, by how you align with the Father. Jesus' success on earth as a minister of the gospel of the kingdom was determined by how he walked with the Father. The Bible says, Jesus said, I do what I see my Father doing. And I say what I hear my Father saying. And he says in John 14, 12, the works that I do. What are the works? The works are seeing and hearing what the Father is doing and saying. Those are the works. 
So watch this. Watch this. The Bible says in Mark chapter 16, it says, and they went and they preached the Lord working with them. That there, watch this. You have a partnership in the invisible realm. Amen. And your success in the supernatural is based on how you yield to that partnership. Amen. Hear this by the Spirit. When I had my first angelic visitation, I was in high school. And I was afraid to tell people about this because a lot of churches at that time didn't talk about the supernatural. It's like, if you talk about supernatural, they would pray for you. <laughs> Just be balanced, son. You're getting carried away. It's all right. Calm down. It's all right. But I was having these experiences. And I remember the first angelic visitation that I had was an angel came into my room in the form he was almost like a wraith. He was almost, he was, he was uh, corporeal. He, he, he was, he had a form, but it wasn't physical. It was hard to ex explain it. But I saw, I saw a form, a spiritual form. And at first, it was like right in my face, and I thought, you know, anytime we have an experience, we automatically think it's demonic. And if we tell the wrong people, they'll say, oh, that's a demon. I'm telling you, you need to get some deliverance. <laughs> and so this particular spirit, this, this angelic spirit, began to just stare at me. It was just looking at me. And then I, I began to... Uh, just kind of look back at it. And when I looked back at it, it didn't say anything, but I could see it moving. I could see it examining me. Because you got to understand, the Bible says that it has this phrase. It says that, talking about our redemption, it says those things the angels desire to look into. Angels are trying to figure out why God still deals with you. They're, they really are confused. They're saying... Okay. So I'm supposed to protect their house tonight? <laughs> Lord's like, yes. They're like, all right, whatever. <laughs> so, so here it is. Watch this. So this angel was looking almost, you ever see how a dog, it'll turn his head like that if you do something crazy, the dog's like this? The angel was kind of like this with this perplexing look like, who are you? What's the big deal about you? And hear this. Listen to me. When the angel began to look at me, he didn't say anything, but it was almost, now this may sound weird, but see, that's why I told you. It took me some years to start teaching you this. It was almost like a, a nonverbal communication. And what you're going to find when we get to heaven You'll notice if you study Revelation chapter 1 through 21, there's not a whole lot of talking. I believe there's things that will be conveyed to us at the speed of thought. And I heard everything this angel was saying to me. And he said one word. He said rest. I was going through a hard time. I was dealing with a lot of warfare. And he said rest. Watch this. The Holy Spirit ministers in you. The angelic ministers to you. Amen. Hebrew says, are they not ministering spirits sent forth to minister to those who are heirs of salvation? Right? So, the, so, so ministering spirits minister to our needs. They never minister in you. They don't have jurisdiction within you. Holy Spirit has that. But there are angelic beings that God has assigned to your life. And sometimes we're ignorant of that, and we're, watch this, we can even offend the angelic realm in our ignorance. Yeah. 
The Bible says, grieve not the Holy Spirit. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Now, grieving the Holy Spirit is not just about cussing and, 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 and fussing and, and doing something sinful, like, you know what, you're going to the club, of course the Holy Spirit will be grieved, or you're drinking or smoking, of course he may be grieved by that. But I don't think that's the, the extent of, of grievance Holy Spirit's talking about. Sometimes the grieving of the Holy Spirit is the insensitivity to your partnership with him. Sometimes he's pulling you in a direction that you just don't feel like going in. I don't want to go. I don't want to do that. Let me give you an example. I've given, given an example several times. So all insomnia is not insomnia. What if it were possible that you were actually rebuking an invitation? Man, you walking around, you pleading the blood over your mind and over this. There ain't nothing wrong with your mind. The reason you can't sleep sometimes is because you're not supposed to. Now, what are he talking about? I'm posed to sleep. That's God's will for my life. I don't receive that. Listen, sometimes you're not supposed to go to sleep. Sometimes you've been assigned in the spirit to a watch. And every watch has a duration of time. It might be from 12 to 1. It might be from 1 to 2. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Might be from 2 to 3, from 3 to 4. And God puts you on the watch. And you say, what am I watching for? You are the watchman of that hour in the spirit. And there's something that's trying to come through that God said, I've given you the authority and the anointing to stop it from coming through. And you think you got sleep problems. And God said, you ain't got no sleep problem. You got a watchman assignment. And you got to stand up and say, in the name of Jesus, I don't know what's going on. I don't know who this is for. But right now, I just thank you, Heavenly Father, for whatever is going on. He begins to download the instruction. You start praying for specific people, for specific situations, with specific names and and, and specific circumstances that you may not know with your mind, but you know it by the Spirit. Oh, come on, somebody. Come on. Somebody say, stand your watch. Let me tell you something. You know what I found out? I need you all to hear this. I'm just flowing. Do you know that sometimes it's not that God's not blessing you. I know, first of all, you're already blessed. Some, somebody say, I'm already blessed. I'm already blessed. Okay. But, but sometimes the issue is a matter of cooperation. Amen. Do you know that receiving is a cooperation? Amen. I'm going to give you an example in a practical sense. Sometimes... We can't even receive a compliment. And that's just a sign that you have a problem receiving in general. I'm going to give you an example. Somebody says, oh, man, you did a great job. Well, that, you know what, honestly, to be honest with you, to be honest, and what you're doing, you're giving them the hand. Subconsciously, you're saying, I don't want, don't put that on me. No, it's, it was God. It had nothing to do with me. It didn't have, it have, it didn't have everything to do with God either. God didn't sing the song, you did. <laughs> and sometimes we want to be real deep and miss what, what why, oh, come on. We'll miss what God is actually trying to release in that situation. Amen. Sometimes, God, you know what? You, how, how many, by show of hands, be real ever found it difficult, somebody's trying to give you something sometimes, and sometimes you, some of y'all don't have any challenge with this at all, but, <laughs> but be honest, sometimes, how many by show of hands have ever had a challenge receiving something from someone? Okay, that's a lot of you. 
right? Now, let me ask you, do we have the mics? Why do you have a challenge receiving something from a person? We got, we got a hand up right here. We got some, okay. Turn the mic on. Put it up to you. Here, okay, can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay, me personally, one of the reasons I was trust. Um, a trust issue. A trust issue, Okay. correct. And then I then come to a realization that every gift people give you, some people I don't receive from because of their intent. Mm -hmm. Okay, what was the intention of the gift? Come on, let's talk about this. This is so good. Now those hands are shooting up. I'll <laughs> Go ahead. Pride and insecurity. Ooh! Ooh! Well, I guess perhaps one minute you might receive some, a blessing which was happy for you. Then you're kind of afraid they might get disappointed with you the next minute. Okay. They might get taken away. Interesting. So you think the, the blessing is conditional. Very good. Over here, Sister Sonia. And then Undeserving. Pastor. Undeserving. That's good. Unworthiness. That's good. Over here. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, I was gonna say like pride too, but like for some people, like you'll try and help them. Like you'll be in the store and they'll have a need or something and you'll try and help them out. And they'll be like, No, I got it, but they don't they don't really have it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But they just don't want to admit it that yep. they need help. Yeah, that's good. Pastor Gore, I thought you were gonna something. You forgot? Okay. <laughs> See, okay, I, I know it's times. I, I say, well, I said, I did that out of my heart. So if I take the money, it just seemed like I didn't really do it out of my heart. Okay. That's, that's, That's an example. I but used to be like that uh, when someone wanted to give me something. I was like, no, thank you, you know. But then I learned that when <laughs> I don't receive it, I'm cutting the other people's blessings. So whenever want anybody wants to give me something, I'll be like, all right, thank you. Yeah. You know, that's how I feel. If you want to give me something, I'll say thank you. That's good. Your hand's up back there. Go ahead, go ahead. This is good. This is good. We're getting there, y'all. Feeling like that you're obligated to do something for them. Mm, good. Yes, Pastor Goya. So basically, if if they gave you something, now you owe them something. Understood. Um, one of the reasons I've struggled with, get, with receiving is because I was only used to receiving my needs, not my wants. Mm. So if it was not a need, I'm like, well, I shouldn't take that. That's not. I was used to just having my basic, you know, my needs met. I'm like, I don't need that first. Yep. So why are you giving it to me? Yeah, yeah very good. Very good. Over here. Come on, y'all. Um, sometimes you don't want to receive because you think you have to pay them back sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so we've seen a number of reasons. We've seen pride as a reason. We've seen unworthiness as a reason, insecurities. We've seen a sense of obligation. If I give you something, you got to give me some. Uh, if you give me something, I got to give you something back. That kind of thing. Sort of this, this, um, reciprocation kind of thing, right? This obligation to reciprocate. And uh, sometimes the trust issue, isn't it? I don't know your motives. What is this about? What's attached to this? Come on, somebody. Come on now. What is this dinner? What's attached to this dinner, sir? Huh? Huh? Why are you taking me to Red Lobster? What you trying to get? <laughs> <laughs> ah. <laughs> so, so here it is. Here it is. It, it means that to receive whatever that person is giving, there must be a yielding. I have to relinquish that pride. That insecurity, that fear, that sense of obligation has to be relinquished in order for you to receive what's being given to you. Man of God, that was a powerful service. The glory of God came out through. Thank you. That's it. 
Oh no, brother, it was not me, my friend. It was all Yeshua. <laughs> He's just doing the most. Watch this. If I don't give with conditions, I shouldn't receive with conditions. My karama soto. Come on. Come on. Come on now. If I don't give with conditions, I shouldn't receive with them either. A man of God came to me one time. He said, I'm, I'm using man of God loosely here. And he came to me and he said, he said to me, he said, God told me to give you $300. I said, yes, he did. <laughs> and he said this, he said, but what you going to do with it? <laughs> oh, oh, sir, hold on now. <laughs> Ain't none of your business. And then, let, me get on, let me get on a separate thing. One of the reasons why we have a hard time receiving is because we have a hard time giving. That channel is not as open as it should be. Y'all got quiet on that one. Why do I mean that? Because sometimes we give expecting things in return. We give with an attempt to control what our gift will do in terms of how that other person will respond to us. Here's the evidence. If you ever gave something and it didn't do what you wanted to do and you got mad, that shows you the condition of your heart. I gave to that church and you know, I thought, hold on a second. Wait one second. I thought you gave to God. You may say, well, no, 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 pass. I get no, 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 no. The Bible says, doing it as unto the Lord, Amen. that from the Lord Amen. you will receive the reward. Amen. When you live like that, let me tell you something. You are living in a state of continual cooperation with heaven because now heaven has the ability and the access and the permission to bring the blessing from any direction. Amen. I might give it here, but it might slap me in my face from over there. And guess what? I'm okay with that. I don't have a right to dictate to God who he uses to bless me. Well, I thought if I gave to Betty, that Betty would bless me. And Betty has ignored you since you gave it. <laughs> and now you're upset. But don't be upset. You, listen, if you really did it as unto the Lord, if you really did it as an act of your obedience to God, it shouldn't matter what Betty does. Amen. What matters is that the channel has been opened up Amen. in the spirit. Now, come on somebody, what I sowed will speak on my behalf wherever it needs to be heard. Amen. Write this. Somebody say, in his, steps. in his steps. You know, you know, I'm going to show you a scripture. I read a book called In His Steps by Sheldon. I believe it was written in the 1800s or early 1900s. I encourage every believer to read it. You can get it from Amazon called In His Steps by Sheldon. And uh, Peter uses this terminology in his epistles. I want you to see this. You can get it from Amazon. It's a fiction book for $3.99. But it's a very powerful, powerful revelation by a guy named Charles M. Sheldon. 
But that's not my, my message. I just want to give you that as a side note. Peter, sorry. Sorry, I lost my, um, my thing here in the, my Bible app. Go to 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 21. For even hereunto were you called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow in his steps. I want to mess with this sort of Grammatically, if I can, just do some grammatic, grammatical reengineering. What if in his steps was not just talking about following what he did, but just like imagine a child and they see the footprint of their father and they put their little foot inside his big foot? What if there's a place in the spiritual dimension where we are actually Walking in Christ. When it talks about being in his name, right, doing this in his name, what if in his name wasn't just talking about using the verbiage? What if I could walk in Christ cooperatively? Meaning, I want you to see this in the realm of the spirit. As you're stretching your hand over that sick person, He's stretching his hand. And you are so synergized with the Messiah that as his hand is being stretched, your hand is being stretched to the point you can't tell whose hand it is anymore. Good God Almighty. What if I said what he said to the point that while he's saying it, I'm saying it. And because our voices are reverberating at the same frequency, you can't tell that there's two people talking. I challenge you tonight to open your heart and to open your spirit to the things of God. I know that sometimes we've had negative experiences with the spirit realm, and that's another thing I want to tell you about. If you're highly prophetic, if God has a, a destiny for your life in the area of the prophetic, in the area of the things of God, the supernatural, you will always have a traumatic experience that was meant to be a disruptor. The devil targets highly prophetic people and experiences them to an overwhelming amount of trauma at an early age. Because what he's trying to do is to shut down the spirit realm to you. To shut it down. And I, I began to think about my life when I was very young. I can't remember that I got exposed to all these scary movies. One of the scariest movies I've ever seen was Pee Wee Herman's Big Adventure. I was frightened to death, I'm telling you. The Gen Z's are like, What's, what movie is that again? Is that on Instagram? Hmm. I was terrified. I'm telling you, I had nightmares. And I'm telling you what happened. Hold on, hold on. Listen, this, I know it's funny, but watch this. I'm, I want you to see the hands in the room. How many, as a child, ever felt like there was something in your room with you? Look at all the hands. How many believe there was something under the bed? And listen, you weren't just feeling, what if I told you that there was a real presence in there? So what, what was the devil doing? He was using fear 
and intimidation to frighten you out of the realm of the spirit. I don't want to go in there. Oh, Lord, I ain't sleeping. Mm -mm, something in there. <laughs> I think something was under my bed. So guess what? I would jump before I got to the bed. I would jump so nothing under there would catch my legs. <laughs> Y'all thought I was you. you I ain't the only one. I, I died, boy. <laughs> if Freddy Krueger's under, he ain't going to get my legs. The devil is a liar. <laughs> that's why you were exposed to witchcraft that's why there was Santeria in your family that's why there was voodoo why? because watch this the enemy targeted you to try to disrupt your communion with God from his Far back as you can remember. Babies, they'll be seeing angels, and then guess what? They'll start seeing demons. To shut it all down. You know, I don't want to see nothing. I don't want to see angels. I don't want to see demons. Nothing. Because the spirit realm is real. But what God wants to do for many of us tonight is to redeem and to restore our spiritual sensitivity. Because you can even be saved and filled with the Holy Ghost and insensitive. God wants to that when you lift your hands, you actually touch something. He wants us so that when you pray, you actually tap into a realm. Yes. Not just saying shit about a Honda. You are tapping into a realm in the spirit. Yes. And listen, in that realm, you are transacting with God. You are transacting. Watch this. In terms of generational manifestations. That one time in prayer, when you're really in the spirit, you can be doing stuff in your bloodline that needs to be fixed. In one moment in your prayer closet, you can be doing stuff. I'm talking about generations are impacted. I'm not just praying. Koromo shata, I'm fixing stuff. Rama shata, I'm an agent of the court of heaven, and I'm going to right the wrongs and to exact justice in the realm of the spirit. There are demonic powers that are being prosecuted when you pray. That's why, listen to me, that's why, that's why, and I'm closing. Pastor Goya, that's why so many witches have come to this church. Because they know who you are. And the thing is, you... You know, if you can't stand the heat, get out the kitchen. And, and I'm not talking about everybody, but there are certain ones that they would come and, 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 and they're trying to see how hot it is, trying to check the temperature. And then when their eyelashes start burning, and their, their wigs start smoking and say, I can't stay up in here. Come on, somebody. That's why sometimes, listen, that's why sometimes when you were just a young one, man, people would try to tear down your self-esteem, say mean things to you, say mean words to you, and those mean words that they spoke became curses that actually altered the trajectory of your life and so now you've been living in the words spoken over your life, not recognizing that the reason why the devil used words to destroy you is because God had a calling for his word in your life and in your mouth. And you need to take the word of God in your mouth and counter every word meant to destroy your life. And say, in the name of Jesus, I cancel every curse spoken against me. See, that, that's, listen. You got to cooperate with this thing. Come on, somebody say, I'm a cooperator. I'm a cooperator. 
So it again, say, I'm a cooperator with the kingdom of heaven. I synergize with the Holy Spirit. I synergize with the angelic host. I synergize with the anointing. And I synergize with the power of God. So now you're moving. You're moving in realms. I'm trying to I wish I, I can't, I haven't even scratched the surface yet. There's not just the realm of the spirit. There are realms in the spirit. That's why sometimes, Pastor Bracey, your tongues change. The reason your tongues change is because you've tapped into a different realm, a different room. Like, for example, you may start in the room of warfare. So you're like, Rabba, Shata, Lama, Sodo, Rabba, and you, you're fighting because you're in the war room. It requires that language. But then, then watch this. Once you've gotten victory in the war room, you start to go into the intimacy room. And now I don't have tongues of war, I have tongues of communion. Yeah. And why? Because I've stepped into a different realm. Then sometimes you'll mess around and find yourself in the court realm. And there's not a lot of talking there. Because you're waiting on the verdicts to come forth. You notice people don't talk in court. If you talk in court, quiet. Order in the court. Because there, I don't need to say much because the judge is about to speak on my behalf. And he's about to issue a verdict against the enemy on my behalf. So sometimes there, I'm just waiting. You got to learn to cooperate. If God's pulling you in a direction, don't try to redirect it. Amen. There's so many times, man, I came and I said, I want to deal with warfare. And the Lord said, talk about honor. I'm just like, hold on, what, we're trying to deal with some demons now. <laughs> God's like, no, that's not what needs to be dealt with. My prayer for you tonight is an increased sensitivity to the spirit realm. There are some problems that are not physical or natural that you've been facing. They are spiritual. They are spiritual problems. I hear the Lord say, tonight he wants to deal with curses. And I notice I didn't say generational curses because all curses aren't generational. And sometimes the evidence of a curse is spiritual limitation. You, you, you don't, you're not able to break into the things you want to break into. You feel limited. Listen, sometimes it's not racism, it's a curse. Sometimes it's not discrimination, there's a curse working. And once you are able to locate the curse, <laughs> Once you're able to locate the curse, you are able to remove the limitation. I got, I got, I got to hear this, hear this. When I was in Georgia, I didn't realize but I was being made into a black radical. That's why I know this so well. I was a part of the United Negro College Fund. I was a part of organizations that work with the NAACP. I marched with Joseph Lowry. I marched with Reverend James Orange. We went to Alabama and all this stuff. And then when I got to, when I was deeper in college, we went to the, the Knoxville Urban Project and they were teaching us about critical race theory and racism and all this stuff. And I came back an angry man. And I was already angry. Now I'm real mad. But not see a white person because I was so bitter. I'm, I'm not saying this to offend anybody. 
I'm showing you what the Lord began to do with me about. And so one day, God began to show me that because I had entered into agreement with demonic doctrines, a curse came upon my life. So everywhere I was looking for discrimination. See, you know you're under a curse because you, you'll see stuff that don't nobody else see. Did they bring out your fork that looked like this? Person's like, I don't see nothing on the fork. It looked good to me. Oh, this, this, this is a Jim Crow fork. And God spoke to me. He said, son, he said, son, let me tell you something. He said, number one, I've already taken your approach away in Christ Jesus. Every generational approach, re reproach from any of your ancestors was nullified in Christ. He said, number two, nobody has power over you except what you give them. Then he said, number three, you are a spiritual being made in my image with no limitations. Amen. And watch this. The curse lifted. Amen. So watch this. Now I go into that same establishment with a totally different reaction. You got to hear what I'm saying. It's not because you're a woman. It's not because of your skin color, no matter what that color is. It's not because of your education level. Sometimes there are spiritual forces operating that have been assigned to limit us. And when you begin to engage these things, you begin to recognize these things, and you begin to cooperate with God to relinquish the power of these things in your life. Your life begins to elevate. And all of a sudden, I found myself anywhere in the world. And everywhere I went, people liked me. And everywhere I went, I liked them. I'm telling you, this is very spiritual. I went to Australia. They told me, they said, you know, if American pastors, y'all come here, you expect big offerings. They don't give big offerings in Australia. They don't give a lot. That, that, that's just not our culture here. And I said, well, I ain't asked for an offering. I didn't come here for an offering anyway. I just preached on revival. And every church I went to, they would come and say, we've been the pastor for 25 years, and we've never seen people give like this. Why? Because a different man stepped into that place. A spiritual man. A spiritual man with the anointing, with the power of the Holy Spirit who is in alignment with heaven. Listen, when you are in alignment with heaven, things that were difficult for you become simplified. Things that were hard for everybody else become as easy as one, two, three when you get your life in synergy. That you, when you begin to say what heaven is saying and see what heaven is seeing and speak what heaven is speaking and do what heaven is doing, Come and see the results in your life. Before you walk in that bank, pray. Before you fill out that application, pray. Before you come into that situation, begin to pray and say, Thy will be done. <laughs> Lord, what is your will concerning this matter? Before I waste my energy, I need to know, Lord, what are you saying about this? Because I want to homologeo. That's what the Bible says in Greek, to say what has already been said. The strength of your spiritual life will begin to increase when you say what's already been said. Lord, what, are you, what does your word say about this? What's the mind of God concerning this matter? Are you listening to me? That is the key. So, Father, tonight in the name of Jesus, we come into agreement with the agenda of heaven, and we say, have your way. We yield to you tonight. 
We give you permission to redirect our steps. Lord, that we will walk in step with you. That as you move, we're moving. As you speak, we're speaking. As you're silent, we're silent. We learn to come into alignment with you. And that, Lord, once we come into alignment with you, you are responsible then to confirm your word with signs and wonders and miracles. Father, we are agents of your kingdom, representatives of your heart and your mind for your people. We accept this call tonight. And tonight, in the name of Jesus, I ordain you afresh as ambassadors, as ministers of reconciliation, that you will go forth in his name and in his power and do exploits. God says, somebody, there's a neighbor you've been witnessing to, and it's like they haven't really been interested. You've been inviting them to church, they haven't been coming. The Lord says, show them me. Show them who I am. There's a coworker you've been praying for. God says, show the coworker heaven on earth. In the name of Jesus. Have your way, Holy Ghost. We give you praise. And we thank you for the victory. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. As we give tonight, I want to encourage you that God's word will never turn return void, will never return void. But it will accomplish what he pleases and prosper in the thing whereinto it was sent. So right now in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you for this time of giving. May you manifest your word in our lives as we surrender to you. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. You may give to the Lord if you're able to, or you can continue to worship as you're led. All right, stretch your hands, Pastor God, did you give? The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and bless you with his peace. His shalom, nothing missing and nothing broken. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.